Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to another Locals Report. This is continuing our Kieran week, and this time we are at Mana Flux for our standard night. Um, it was a good game. It was good games. Let's let's talk about them, shall we? Round one, we went against Dialga V-Star, and it was a loss-loss. Um, uh, game one, absolutely perfect start. Had three Kieran V-Max turn two, open Luxray. It was great. Came down to needing one of the three Glaciated Worlds to hit for the win. With Serena... Uh, take Luminion for the last two prizes. So yeah, uh, long story short, I had a uh, knockout on uh, Luminion. If I hit one Glaciated World, I'd surrender to boss it up. None of them hit. Not a single one of the three Glaciated Worlds hit. And I did everything I could to make that happen. Opponent had energy on Dialga for Kronos, the Metal Blast KO. Um, this is going to be a theme you're going to notice in these recordings. I hate Dialga. You can do everything right all game. You can play like an absolute beast. And then you can get down to having one or two prize cards left to get, and suddenly they've taken five. And you're like, cool, I guess that's your game then, because you managed to hit, like, five energy off a goddamn Magnazone. I have a real issue with high roll decks. I really do. It seems to be... This is the issue, right? High roll decks are supposed to be, like, feast or famine. And I, it seems to be feast for opponents constantly. Anyway, enough of my bitching. Um, <laughs> that, was, uh, that sucked. Game two had Kurim Vs on board, but no V maxes and two prized. Opponent had Brick Start, but could not capitalize. Deck died on its arse. Going second is probably the play, though. Yeah, yeah, it sucked. Um, I, I did my usual deck search, and I was like, ah, cool, two of my VMAXs are prized, and I can't draw the two I need at all. No Ultra Balls or anything like that. So, yeah, fell apart quite quickly, so that was a double loss on Dialga. Um, speaking of high roll decks, round two was against Maridon. Uh, it was a loss, win-win. Game one was a hard brick. That's the only note. Good. Game two, Kieran VMAX kept tempo. Again, this is over a week ago now, so I'm, I'm struggling to remember what it was. I think it was just a typical gameplay of, like, Kirim's taking knockouts, constantly keeping the energy topped up. It's one of the things with Kirim, you, you, if you can get to a point where you've got, like, enough energy on your active uh, Kirim, but also can have, like, three on the ready on your other one, one two, three Kirims, even if that Kirim goes down, that one's immediately ready to move up to do 270 damage. Like, it's it's really good. Um, again, this is, the, this is probably the important, like, game... Uh, game three, open Luxray. Apparently that's two of five. Oh, the, the second time out of five times I pulled it. And Kieran V and Battle Pass went second every game. Being able to rapid strike, uh, rapid freeze or Luxray is huge. Didn't need more than three energy on each Kieran, so kept two topped up. Switching cups and auto were huge. So yeah, um, I, I, I finally got Luxray available in this deck. I didn't play it in the previous video. Um, I just didn't have a Luxray, finally got one. Every game where I open Luxray, uh, Luxray being explosiveness, if it's in your hand when you start the game, you can play it straight into the active. Uh, it has an attack for 50 damage and lets you search for any two trainer cards. Every time I started that, perfect. It's like, you know, your RCSP double turbos. You, that is the exact perfect start for you, and the two trainer cards is massive because it forces your opponent to make a decision. You either judge away the win condition for me next turn, or you play your usual supporter plans. So, yeah, at worst, it makes your opponent think. At best, it's almost like the game winner because if you can open two, three Cure MVs, immediately Adventures Discovery for three Cure MV Max, you're in the game, and it's hard to lose from that position. Um, so yeah, ended up winning that, um, beating him a ride on, which is always good, because again, still one of my bogey decks. Uh, round three, God of War EX win-win. Uh, game one, looks right open alongside Irida, game ran perfectly. So usual game plan. Game two, Radiant Ninja started with Irida. Three Kirimon to bench with Irida plus VIP. That's me going second. Set up Greninja for attack early. Opt didn't play Manaphy. Once I've taken three prizes, moved Ninja up with Clutch Switch for two more prizes. With Hand State had KO on anything moving up and Escape Rip just in case. So yeah, the fact that Manaphy never went down. Um, they had two Curliers set up after I'd already taken three prizes off, I want to say, a Roltzenization. Um, I just knocked out two more Curlier. Five prizes up. They had taken nothing. Like I said, even if they'd knocked out the Greninja, I had the stuff in hand to just, like, take a knockout anywhere I needed. So, yeah, worked really well. Um, again, when the deck flows, it flows. Round four. Yo, this will sound familiar. Lost Kyoga. Lost win loss. Um, Brick start. G1. Awesome. You'd love to see that. G2. Kyoga prized for opponent. Kyurem's powered up slowly for win. I think I had to do a fair bit of manual attachment in that game, if I remember right. Uh, game 3, good stuff for me, managed to take prizes quickly, Op used Lost Mind to put enough damage on Kyurem VMAX for a Kyoga KO on VMAX and a V, Ninja taken down early for all 6 prizes. So yeah, I think I started with the V, uh, with the, yeah, I started with the Ninja to potentially set up for a 
win, uh, sorry, with a win condition of knocking out Confes. Manaphy went down and then he got knocked out. Um, and yeah, the, the Curium V and VMAX thing, it was another awkward one where I couldn't quite get what I needed up. If I remember right, actually, I think, yeah, he Equin horned the Curium V back. Did he? I can't remember. <laughs> well, I must have benched it thinking I was going to power it up. Anyway, that was five prize cards and to finish the game. So, yeah, not a lot I could do about that. But, uh, yeah, ended up 2-2-0, which is, you know, average score from a meme deck. Certainly not complaining. Um, but that was definitely me saying, yeah, I'm done with that deck. So, yeah, it's in it's in bind the jail, as uh, I started saying decks that do uh, poorly are. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it was a fun deck. Like, I wish it was as good and good and consistent as it was back in I want to say Silver Tempest, maybe Lost Origin, whatever it was. Like Palkim Kira was a Kira was a really fun deck, but because we've lost uh, Orangaroo, because we've lost Capacious Bucket, it's died off a little bit. There is potential to maybe have it as like a huge game-ending glass cannon in Chen, uh, Chen Pao decks, because theoretically you could like just whip out Kira out of nowhere, throw down your three NG with a Palkia. Get two more with Chen Pao, load that up back Scalibur. Suddenly you're going to be hitting for five times 50, 250 plus 120, 370 damage. Late game, if they've got a VMAX summit that you're struggling to take down and you just pull that out of nowhere, you could do some serious damage. But so far, I've not seen any lists running Kyurem. So it's probably, that's probably it for Kyurem. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I said that about Dialga and look at Dialga now. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, guys, all my social media links are in the description below and there is more local reports coming. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, and yeah, if you did enjoy this, let me know. I always like to know uh, what's going right on the channel. I can do more of it. But until the next one, thank you for watching. I shall see you in the next one. See ya.